there are some very important basic water ter color turns. Practice with your brush before you start an actual painting that are very important to know and understand for the flow of the paint. First, we call one fully loading your brush. And I'm going to take it here in my ultramarine blue. This is really putting a lot of watercolor paint where it's almost dripping. And then you just brush it along the side of your palette to, to release some of it. Try this at home along with me. The next thing is blotting, which is another term in watercolor. This is just another way of just removing the excess on a paper towel, and some people use a sponge. If you're sitting down and painting, uh, I find it comfortable just to use my sponge and just go like this. There is a term called blot lightly. Once you have a lot of your watercolor on you, just touch the tip into your paper towel, removing some of the excess, and that's blotting lightly. Blotting well is laying the hairs of your brush down like this in one direction and then go the opposite. Now, important enough is rinsing your brush. Remove the color of the brush in one of your waters, very gently tapping to the bottom of your pan. What happens, the hairs will open up like this and it will be clear it out. So you should have a nice clean brush after that. Now let's work on some basic strokes that are so important uh, in watercolor. Uh, so that you can feel more comfortable with your hand, I'm going to be working with a 3 8 inch flat brush right now. And the one of the strokes is called a flat wash. It's just a very simple way to cover a very large area. Okay, washes can be laid on wet or dry paper. And I'm going to take one of these over here that have already been sized. And what is a good idea when you're working on with your watercolor, always try to have it lifted up a bit. I take a little piece of wood, which helps me. Um, have a little bit of an elevated easel. The graded, the flat wash that I'm going to do for you, you take, let's try the ultramarine blue again. We put a lot of blue onto it and we go into horizontal strokes. We start and we just go all the way across on our paper. With flat wash, you have to return to your watercolor and start overlapping from left to right again. Very simple. It takes a lot more of your, your paint this way. The next one is called a graded wash, and it's my favorite because perfect for painting skies and water. Once again, it is laid out the exact same way as a flat wash. Let's try some cerulean blue this time. And you start from here and go across horizontally. Here is where you add water, not paint. Overlap a little bit. Come on down further. And I'm just adding water, no paint. The value becomes lighter and lighter and lighter as you get down. Continue overlapping until you're satisfied with the value. And you can see it almost looks like a beautiful sky starting to develop at this point. Once again, this is a flat wash. This is a graded wash. There is another term that we use in watercolor, which is called beading. I like to call it pearls. And a lot of my friends laugh when I say that, but I do like to call it a pearl. Let's try another color. Beading is making tiny little dots of color. 
and let's try back to the blue. They're very much like this, tiny little dots. Once you have your dots, you just take your brush, and I'm using a round, and bring it over. And here we go again. We make another little dot, and we bring it over this way. After you familiarize yourself with these washes and the beading, you can now go ahead and take the next step and go into what we call it charge two colors together. Charging is a technique that lets the colors mix on your paper versus a pellet. And it's so interesting to see how one wet color reacts when another wet color is painting right up against to it. So let us take and continue on with this blue, and I'm coming through with my pearls. I'm going to come on down further, and let's just make it a kind of an uneven line here. You rinse and get another color. Let's go into our primary yellow right now, and we come up pretty close to this. If you practice this at home, you're going to feel so much more comfortable with your watercolors. You bring a little bit down, and it's amazing how this could change and bleed into one another. And this is called charging, and it's a great way to see how your colors will react with each other. It's very, very simple. And that is the transition. Okay. The next thing I would like to show you, and what is really a lot of people talk about if you in 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 watercolors is wet on wet and wet into dry. Wet on wet is wet is simply painting your wet colors on very wet paper. So my paper is dry right now. It was sized. So I'm going to come over here, spray, and I've just wet my watercolor paper. Let me take this one, and let's go into taking wet, and you'll see how it can bleed. It lands up giving you very, very soft edges and a very smooth blend. Wet into dry is your wet color onto a very dry surface. You get much sharper edges. With this method, you can find, you can actually control the paint better. But let me go back into Carillion. And this is dry, remember, and my wet, and I'm gonna make some little marks just like this. You see my edges are much tighter. This is the fun one, and this is the one I usually end up using. So just practice this at home and have fun with that. The last thing that we're going to talk about, okay, before we begin any work, is what we call white on white or saving the white. Now this is kind of fun. Every, I'm going to try to use this piece here, which is great. If you have clipboards at home, and they're plexiglass, I suggest you use them. I reverse them, and I always have a little bit of a grade in my watercolor this way. Uh, they work well for many reasons. Many things that we paint have pure white in there. We want to retain the whiteness of it and retain the whiteness of the paper. And the use of what we call masking fluid is applied. You put it in the areas that you want your white. It's not applied to anything that is damp, so your paper has to be very dry. Now, to use your masking uh, fluid, shake it well. I have a small container here for us to use. Shake it well, and 
you take an old brush. Do not take a, a good brush at home, okay? Dip it, okay, in your water. I put mine on soap. What happens, the soap is great. It keeps the bristles from soaking up some of this fluid before it dries. Then you go to your masking fluid. And we put it onto here. Let's just do a little practice here. And this I suggest you practice at home. You'll have a lot of fun with this. Now, when this dries, it just comes off with your finger. Or you can use a gum eraser as well. And it does take sometimes a little bit time for it to dry, so I'll wait for that. 